cooking single with Sarah. This cooking show I've designed for the single gal like myself who mostly finds herself at home with some really good food in the fridge, whether she got it at the local co-op or at a local farmer's market, and wondering what the heck are we going to make for ourselves, me, one person, with all these ingredients. Of course, I love to cook for other people, so if anyone I know ever wants to come over, you're welcome to come over for dinner. Just give me a heads up and I'll make sure there's enough food. But for right now, I'm going to show you a few tricks up my sleeve on how I've discovered to cook really healthy, well, mostly healthy, meals just for myself. And of course, there are usually some leftovers, but I try and make meals where either I can make the leftovers into something else for another meal, or I can freeze them, or maybe I can even take them over to a friend's house to give them an offering, which I did a few weeks ago with a wonderful pie. Or I try and create meals where it's either just a one meal item or something where there might not be too many leftovers. One of my favorite things to make is an eggplant lasagna. It's a low fat eggplant lasagna. But the problem is I always find there's way too much lasagna. Um, for one person. So my big goal right now is to try and take this lasagna recipe and break it down into a much smaller lasagna. As much as they always say you can freeze lasagna and I figured out a way to just freeze individual pieces, honestly it gets a little sickening after a while. Um, I once made a lasagna and tried to eat the entire thing without freezing it and basically I ate lasagna for lunch and dinner every single day for an entire week. And that's how you're going to probably get sick of one recipe and never want to eat it again. Um, so I'd rather create some recipes for the single gal um, where we can enjoy a wonderful meal that would normally be served to a huge family but instead just for ourselves or maybe another friend to join us or maybe just a couple meals for the week. Uh, or maybe freeze one portion of it. If I could make a lasagna where I could eat one piece for dinner, maybe one for lunch the next day, because lasagna is always really good the next day, and maybe freeze a piece. So a three-piece lasagna would be my ideal situation um, to create. So keep an eye out for the future when hopefully I'll create that recipe. So for this evening, I'm going to make uh, gazpacho. It is so deathly hot in Burlington, Vermont right now. We have had rain all summer. And finally, we have these hot, humid summer days. The real summer has come to Vermont. And what better thing to eat in the summertime to get all your veggies in and not have to turn on the oven is make gazpacho, which is a soup made out of all vegetables, and it's served cold. And I hear it's actually best served if you put it in the fridge for a few hours and eat it maybe the next day. Um, in this case, I'm going to have one serving for dinner tonight, and then I'll have it perfectly available to have for lunch tomorrow after it has sat in the fridge for a while. So it's very easy to make, um, perfect for the single gal. You find tons and tons of gazpacho recipes out there. Um, practically every good cookbook has one. They're all over the internet. They're normally for a humongous bowl. Well, first of all, I don't own a humongous bowl. But second of all, I don't need that much gazpacho because I'm pretty sure it's not the kind of thing you're going to want to freeze or keep around for more than a few days. So I'm going to make a very small recipe, and I'm going to make it sort of my style with what I can find at the farmer's market and not using too many sort of added ingredients. One of the things a lot of them call for is some kind of a white vinegar. Well, who the heck is white vinegar hanging around? But the one thing I always have is a red wine vinegar because I tend to put that on my salads. So this recipe of mine is going to be made with just regular red wine vinegar, some organic olive oil thrown in, just a little bit here and there, um, some wonderful tomatoes, some peppers, of course cucumber, um, garlic, and I don't know, we'll see how it comes out. So. Let's get started. Here are the ingredients along with the tools that we're going to need to make this gazpacho this evening. So in the way of ingredients, most of this stuff is from the local farmer's market. We have some tomatoes from one of the farm stands at the market. Um, I believe the black pepper is also, um, excuse me, the green pepper is from a stand at the farmer's market. Um, the cherry tomatoes, which are so delicious, I already had a few of them in a salad a few nights ago as well as the yellow, little yellow pepper and the darker pepper and the cucumber come from my favorite farmer's market stand at the Burlington Farmer's Market, which is Half Pint Farm. Um, you'll notice a couple of garlic cloves down there. Those actually are not from the farmer's market because um, they sell fresh garlic at some of the stands, but not necessarily dried garlic. That's something you have to dry out yourself. Um, I did make a chicken the other day with some fresh garlic and discovered that you probably don't want to be cooking with it unless you kind of know what you're doing. So this um, garlic I most probably got at City Market Co-op. I can't remember. Um, it's probably organic, but um, there's a slight chance it isn't. 
Hopefully it is though. And then the red onion is actually an organic one from City Market Co-op because silly me forgot to pick up a red onion at the farmer's market. So I just dashed into um, City Market the other day and picked one of those up. I also have some organic extra virgin olive oil and some red wine vinegar. Um, most gazpachos I think are made with white wine vinegar or something like that. But honestly, I don't have a lot of that stuff hanging around. So I try and make things with things I would normally have um, hanging around my kitchen um, for multiple purposes. The other thing I picked up at City Market the other day was something I've never really heard of before. It's in this jar. It's called Organic Strained Tomatoes. And normally a gazpacho is made with some really good quality tomato juice. Well, I couldn't really find a very good quality one at City Market. I wanted to get something organic. And in addition to that, this was cheaper and is basically just made out of tomatoes and there's no real additives to it. So um, I don't know if you can find it anywhere else. We're going to try this as an experiment this evening. I've never used this stuff before, but hopefully it'll be good. And of course, we've got some um, kosher salt, which I always have in my kitchen in a little ramekin. Um, so I can put that on stuff easily. And then my wonderful handy dandy um, pepper mill um, so I can freshly grind pepper. Um, and then in the way of tools here we have a wonderful cutting board, obviously a cook's necessity, a really good quality sharp knife. I love my Japanese Santuko knife. And um, the biggest tool we're going to need this evening is a blender. Every single gal, I'm sure, has some kind of a blender. Honestly, it doesn't matter what the quality of it is. Um, I tend to use mine every day for making protein smoothies. You could obviously use a fancy kitchen gadget like a food processor for this recipe, but um, not very many single gals have one of those. I luckily do because I have invested very well in my kitchen gadgetry. Um, was not willing to wait until I got married to uh, provide myself with wonderful, good quality kitchen stuff. But we won't whip that out today. Maybe another day. And then here we have just a regular bowl. It's the biggest one that I own. It's not that big, but you know what? We're making a soup recipe just for a single gal. So I don't need to get that many servings out of this. Maybe three or four maximum. Ideally, it would be nice just to have um, two or three servings. So we'll see how much we can get out of this food here. And uh, so let's get started. First things first, let's clear the decks a little bit, move some stuff aside, and get ready to get the shopping and cook it. So the first thing I'm going to start with is the cucumber. I probably won't use this end. Toss that one. I don't know if I'm going to need the whole cucumber, so I'm just going to cut it. We'll see what we get out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it into some chunks. And don't mind me, I have horrible knife skills. But you know what? I'm not a professionally trained chef. So, so I'm just going to cut it into some chunks. Not too small, because you know what? It's going to go into a blender. So, so we're going to do each vegetable one at a time and then try and clean out the blender because from what I hear, if you try and make a gazpacho where you kind of blend everything together, it just creates one nasty mushy thing and not a true gazpacho. So don't mind the noise. And of course, this is not a very good quality blender, so we'll see how this goes. This is my trick. I just kind of, since it's not very soupy yet, shake it about. Okay, we'll try that one more time. Time I tried a different setting. You know, sometimes cooking is just about willing to just experiment as you go, because no one's perfect. Whoops. Okay. I think that's looking pretty darn good to me. I don't know if you can see that, but that's how it looks inside. So I'm just going to actually scrape it now into my bowl here. So I'm going to need another gadget, which is probably just a little small spatula. I have every kind of size spatula you can imagine because I went crazy one day with gadgetry. So we're going to get this out of here. Oh, it's a little soupy, but that's okay. I'm sure we will make this taste delicious. 